Yo, what's up, guys? Hey, man, welcome back to the channel. Yo, man, if y'all new, or y'all been here before, y'all already know, man. I appreciate each and every one of you that come through here, that slide to the page, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, give me a little few minutes of your time just to give you a little bit of knowledge on certain careers, especially radiology. You know, this is, you know, my profession is what I've been doing for the past 15 years. So you, yourself, or your spouse, or your kids, or your uncle, or your cousins, if y'all are there interested in radiology, especially radiology, because I talk about a little about a little bit about all medical professions, but if they're interested, go ahead and have them follow, man. Share this video, share this page, uh, this channel, because uh, I'm here to help you guys. All right. So, uh, oh, make sure to subscribe. So today's video is about what's the difference, the major difference between CT and MRI. So. I'm going to give you a few examples of what CT is, and then I'm going to give you examples of MRI. And in the end, I'm going to give you my real insight on which one I think you should pursue first and if you even should pursue one at all. You know, and this is my opinion. So CT, right, which is this machine right here. So the thing about CT is basically it's continuous radiation. The machine don't stop. It doesn't stop um, working once it turns on. You do have to turn it off in the morning or at night for at least an hour or at least do the restarting of it you know every few hours because it gets it gets cold um, even though it's continuous running it gets cold so you have to always like warm it up and things like that because of the fact that you know if you don't do a patient for an hour it's not going to give you proper images and it can mess up the machine so you got to warm it up to you know to get it started ct is one of those emergency modalities so basically, if you go to the ER, or if you're working as a CT tech, anybody that goes to the ER, there's a 99.9% .9 chance that that, te that that tech, excuse me, that that patient will get a CT scan. It doesn't matter. If, you, if the patient goes in there with a headache, then be like, okay, let's do a CT brain, make sure you don't have a bleed. Let's do an x-ray of the chest. You know, those are the two one that goes hand in hand, right? So... Well, that being said, CT is one of those modalities that is super busy. It's always, it depends where you work, of course. If you work in a hospital, always going to be busy because you're going to get your traumas. You're going to get your MVAs, which is motor vehicle accidents. You're going to get your stroke patients, you know, with people that are having strokes and one side weakness. So CT is for that. You're going to get your patients that are shortness of breath. So for shortness of breath, what they do, they do a PE study. And it makes sure there's no blockage in the pulmonary arteries. So yeah, and then that not only that, if you work in a hospital, now you now you're not just dealing with the now you're dealing with inpatients as well. So there's three or four floors up there that you know there's internalists all you know twenty four seven. So if a patient upstairs you know be like hey you know I'm having di difficulty breathing, then boom they're gonna order a CT chest PE study, and you had to deal with them as well. So. CT is one of those modalities that always stay busy and that you're the cool thing about it, though, I guess, because it is, it is busy is the fact that you're never bored. You honestly don't have no time to be bored. You don't have no time to sit around because it's just one of those modalities that's boom, 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 boom. You know, yes, we check, you know, the things that we had to check for in CT is the lab work. We check for BUN, creatinine and GFR. So basically, all that is, is kidney function. When it comes down to the nitty gritty, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for kidney function. If your kidney function is not up to par, then we can't inject contrast, you know? But some doctors, they just don't believe in it. They feel like, no, that's a myth. That's a lie. And they just sign off and be like, I want it anyway. And you sign off. Doo -doo -doo. So you, you can't get a way of, you can't get a way of not doing a CT. Like there's no, you know, there's no limits unless the radiologist is like, no, their labs are way too low. We're not going to inject. You don't have to inject type thing, right? But for the most part, the ER doctor can be like, yeah, you know, just do it, sign off on it and do it. And that's that that can be hard on you, too, because you're like, man, this is my license. You know, like I, I shouldn't be injecting this patient. But at the same time, you know, once they sign off, then it's out of your hands. You know what I'm saying? So you kind of stuck in the middle, but not in the middle. So that's what you have to really have to deal with in CT now. In my personal opinion, x-ray and CT go hand in hand because as for now, like right now I'm at a freestanding ER doing a travel assignment. I couldn't get this assignment if I wasn't CT certified because of the fact that I work by myself. They trust me to work alone because I, you know, I know how to do my thing. So basically I have to know how to do x-ray, general x-ray, and also how to do a CT. 
you know, so you can't get freestanding ER jobs with just x-ray only. You have to do both. So I say CT and MR, CT and x-ray are both are basically hand in hand. So you need both of them in order to get like a good core to your radiology career journey, I guess you can say, right? Now, it's a little bit about CT. Now, MRI, which is this. So the main difference with MRI and CT is that MRI is all magnetic. We already know what radiation does, right? Radiation can cause cancer if you're exposed to it too much. That's why we wear these little badges right here. These badges we send out every three months and it just, you know, loads up your radiation, see how, how much you're getting. 99.9% of the time is always undervalue, always under, because we don't get exposed that much. We were smart. We try to like, you know, do the distance and, and not get radiated. So, you know, we try to stay as safe as possible. Sometimes you just can't help it, but 99% of the time we try to stay as safe as we can, right? The difference between MRI is that MRI doesn't really have enough research out there because it is magnetic and we don't know what that really causes or doesn't cause, you know? And this is a funny thing. I ain't going to lie to you. This is, this is what I've seen in my MRI experience. And I don't know if this has something to do with it or not, but I will tell you though, that every MRI machine man that I've seen as either going bald or semi bald, you know, like they don't have no hair. Now, I don't know if that, ha if that has anything to do with the MRI machine, you know, all the magnetic taking their hair away. I don't know. I don't know if it's a stress of being an MRI tech. I'm not sure, bro, to be honest, but that's a fact. If you go to a hospital, you see MRI techs, 99% of them don't have no hair. <laughs> and I don't know why that's it. I, I could be tri I could be tripping. Don't get me wrong. You know what I'm saying? I could be tricking. I, I could be tripping. I can be a little biased. You know what I'm saying? But oh, MRI text. Nah, I'm just kidding. But for real, if you go look at them, bro, you'll see, man, most of them are missing hair. You're like, hey, man, what's going, what's going on? Play us. Should I be MRI tech or not? You know? But other than that, though, you know, like MRI techs are stressful. They are stressed out because of the fact that they are putting patients inside a magnet. A magnet. A magnet does never, ever shut down unless there's something wrong with it or they're doing a PM. But for the most part, you know how CT at night at the imaging center, right? CT at night, you turn, you shut it off. You shut it off completely because of the fact that, you know, you have to shut it off that you can reboot in the morning and get, you know, ready for the day. MRI does never, the MRI never shuts off. It stays on 24 seven. So the reason it's so scary is because some patients, 99% of the patients are older. You know, when I say older, like 65, 70, you know, 75. And then, you know, they don't, honestly, they don't care. You know what I'm saying? They're like, ah, I got to get this done, right? So they lie. They, a lot of them lie. You know, they have a, a checklist that they have uh, like a worksheet and they ask them questions. Do you have any clips? Have you ever had surgery? Do you have a pacemaker? Do you have this? Do you have that? Do you have any tattoos? And now everybody's like, no, 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 no. Right. So you have to go by what they say, even though MRI outside the machine, they have like a little detector. So it's like kind of like a, when you're going through like a, what's it called? TSA. I think that's what it's called when you go to the airport. And it beeps if there's any metal. So they make you put a gown on. They take everything off. Even now, they're saying that leggings, for, for females, that they wear the leggings, that, that those have some kind of type of lead in them that can that the MRI and the material can actually burn the patient. And that's kind of scary. You know what I'm saying? So so when you put when they put the patient in there, I've seen so many freak out. Like, oh, my God, they got a pacemaker. He said they didn't have nothing or blah, blah, blah. And then they take them out really quick because... What happens is that if they do have a pacemaker, the magnet is the magnet is so powerful that it can shift, you know, it can shift anything in there and you can, you know, potentially, you know, you know, a patient, you know what I mean? I don't know if I can say that word on here, but you possibly can say that you, you possibly can do that. So MRI techs are always super stressed. And if you work in a hospital, MRI techs are 99.9% always on call. CT techs, some hospitals I worked at, they're on call. Some hospitals I worked at, they're not on call. So it depends where you work at, but I know that 100% MRI techs do take call. And there's, there's two or three MRI techs and you have one main MRI tech lead that he or she probably doesn't take call and the other two do. But, and, uh, but most of the time, MRI techs do take a lot of call. And uh, that's basically, honestly, the biggest difference is that MRI is really not an emergency modality. That's mostly CT. If a, if a patient goes in, the, there's a 10 times more chance that they're going to get a CT and x-ray than ever MRI. Because MRI, they have to go through so many different procedures. And had the, it has to be like a safe environment for the patient. You just can't be like, oh, I want an MRI. I'm going to get it done now. 
doesn't work that easily, you know, as far as like patients in the ER or outpatient at that. There's a lot that, go, that goes to it. Now, in my personal opinion, what you should do, final thought, if you go for x-ray first, go to x-ray immediately as soon as you can get your CT license, you know, because those two go hand in hand, like I said. And then a year or two down the line, if you feel like, you know what, I want to do MRI, go for MRI, you know, or you can look at 